Suzanne Legrand, and this is The Case of the Missing Home. I had planned on backing out, telling Joyce that I could not be her shaman. But I had such a good time listening to Joyce's stories, and she had such a good time telling them that I entirely forgot. She said something that I keep thinking about. She said, I've spent a lot of time on the precipice because I'm trying to push my boundaries, to innovate. But she let out a heavy sigh, but it's been harder than I thought. There are surprises you can't plan for. I didn't know it would be this hard. That made two of us. I had been pushing boundaries too, choosing my own time over every other kind of security. I owned books, art supplies, and I'd learned many things, but this did not translate to a full-time job or a house or a 401k. To some, I looked like a professional failure, heading towards impoverished spinsterhood. Maybe that's also how I saw myself. But Joyce didn't see it as failure or a character flaw. She saw it as innovation, something that she chose in the art and the dance of her life. Two days later, she called me on the telephone, her voice shaky. The prince had smiled as she looked through the mail and left on her plate an eviction notice. I can't breathe, she gasped. We were having such a nice time. I thought... What am I going to do? Joyce had been trying friends, Craigslist, but every apartment had fallen through. I don't want to be homeless. Breathe, I said. First, you need to find legal help. Even before she called, I had already decided to journey on her behalf. The eviction notice just sealed the deal. And I realized no one person can change the reality for the collective. That's not how creation or power works. Diseases are collectively created, and so are cures. Maybe I couldn't solve the big problem all at once, but I could journey to find the root of the problem, hers, mine, and the collective's. This has been case of the missing home. Stay tuned to find out what happens next. <laughs>